Hello guys, this is Joseph again from Joe Concepts. How are we doing today? All right, so in this video, I quickly want to talk about um, object tag in Redshift and talking about math in object tags in Redshift. So how we can math an object together. So really what math is used for in Redshift is just more like your normal Cinema 4D compositing tags where you add to an object and then it catches um, shadows of um, whatever light you have in the scene. So really, the what you do with that is you actually have an image file that you are going to compose it in your 3D software and such that when you put in your 3D model, it interacts with the picture as though it's part of the picture. So that is what this is all about. So um, we're going to look at the object tag and look at the um, math tabs of that object tag. That is what we want to do in Redshift. So if you look at this object that I'm showing right here, this object right here, I downloaded it in Pixel. I'm not sure, either Pixel or on Splash.com. So, but I'm going to put the link in the description down there so you can just check the um, site. So they have good um, images that you can work with. All right, so I downloaded this image and just wanted to composite some 3D objects here so that it interacts with this. So this is what I got. So I got this. So if you look here, you can see that this object, you can see the interaction of this object with the floor. You notice this seems more like it. You can see the shadow. And that's not only it. If you look down here, you can see that also have a reflection and the reason why i added the reflection is if you look at the main object itself the floor is reflective a bit so that's why i added the reflection there so that is what we're going to be looking at how to create this using the matte tool or the matte object tag in cinema for the redshift so this is what we have in the scene so there are a couple of ways you can do this you can just bring in your object and put it as um a background object and then make your floor create a floor object and let it flow but then that wouldn't be that um accurate for me the reason is because i need to look at the perspective of this image also that i'm getting so i won't really get that if i'm to use that option so the other option that i used eventually is to do a camera calibration so, but I'm not going to be talking about camera cal calibration here. I have a separate tutorial where I talked about camera calibration. So I'm also going to put a link in the description. So you can quickly check that before you come back and do this. But if you have a knowledge of camera calibration, then fine. You can just continue with this. So, but this is the camera calibration that I have, which I, I, I hid here. So if you look at what we have here, I have a camera tag and I did the calibration. So I had the image. This is what i have so if i look through this camera this is what i get to see all right then i after calibrating this i added a plane object which i aligned to be in this format so really we don't really need this if you want to know how to do camera calibration you can just check the link so let's go to what this tutorial is about all right so now from here, I, I hit this because I created a Redshift camera, which I'm going to be making use of. So I'm going to hide this, go to the camera. So the first thing you're going to do is, notice you're not seeing anything here. Don't worry about that. So the first thing you're going to do is to create a dome light. So you go to light, create a dome light. So I'm going to create a dome light. And that dome light, I'm going to bring in the image that I downloaded. So I'll just drag this image over here. And that will be loaded so i have the image here okay so you still will not see this you can only see it in your rendering so then the other thing is if i shoot this render now this is what we're gonna have so if i render this out let's make this 100 so this is what we have so let's 50 so you can see that the floor is I have this image, but this doesn't look like the image we have here. So for us to make sure we have this kind of image, we need to put the same image in the back plate of the dome light. So coming down to the dome light here, we need to activate the back plate. 
So the back plate is off right now. So we need to bring in the same image to the back plate. As soon as we do that, we are now going to see the right image, how the image is meant to look like. So this is the first thing. So the next thing you want to do is to set and make this plain object to also catch um, shadow or to work with this um, image that you have in the um, back plate. So what you do is you select this plane, you right click on it. You notice I don't have any um, texture and you just right click on it, you go to Redshift tab, go to Redshift objects, then you want to go over to your Math tab, yeah? enable this. As soon as you enable, you don't see anything. The reason why you don't see anything is because you need to enable the general. As soon as you enable the general, you have this. So this is fine. So that's the first thing you want to do. So now let's try and see whether we're going to have interaction. So this is more like we are back to the start. This is the real image. So how is this helpful? So because I have already done camera calibration, I can put in an object here and that object will interact. So if I scale this down and use my move tool to bring this up, just bring it close to the camera. Scale this even much down and bring it up. So you already you are seeing what we're having in the scene and also what we're having in the render. So you see what we have. So this guy is here, but then it doesn't seem like he's interacting with this floor. So that is where this comes in handy, the shadow. We need to make sure it also casts shadow on this floor. So you click on cast shadow. As soon as you do that, notice what happens here. So I'll make this um, 90 so you see very well. So you notice if you deactivate, you see the floor. And if you activate it, you see it. So that's the first thing you want to do. So let's bring this back. The other thing you also want to do here is to look at the image. So I'm going to be using this. If you look at this image, you notice that the shadow is coming towards us. If you look at it, the shadow right there is coming down here. So that means the light is somewhere here and it's casting backwards, making the shadow come down. So we need to also try and simulate sim similar thing here. So we'll go back to Redshift lights. We're going to bring in area light. So as soon as you bring in area light, you see this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this camera. So that even if I go out of this camera, I don't want this camera to move out. So bring this here, go out of the camera and rotate this light such that it is casting backwards like this. So you can start seeing the effects of the lights here. So I need it to come down. So I need to move this light until I have the proper representation of this light. So we can just bring this down a little bit. So maybe it should come sideways a little bit. So if you feel that this um, shadow is too much, so you can just come in and reduce the intensity. So let's bring the intensity down and maybe 30. So we are having a very good representation now. All right. So, so another thing I did for that image is that you notice this side is so dark and this so we need to um, break up this. So if I bring up a fillet and reduce this, so let's try um, two or one. Make this three. So this is meant to catch the light, highlights, but we're not seeing any highlights and this place seems too dark. So I'm going to bring in another area light and bring that area light somewhere here. So it just show me what I have here. So I'll just bring this back and reduce this a little bit and rotate it such that it just give me the detail. So what I just need to do for this is just to reduce this so much. So I'll bring this to some, maybe let's try 15. So we are still having detail. If you don't have anything, see what you have. And here. So I'm going to put another one here. So I think we could go away with 20. Fine. So I'm going to create another one to this side. Move. And this is going to be more like um, a few lights. So I'm just 
trying to be fast here so once we have this and um, maybe we'll give this a hue of blue so you see that then you can also come here change the this to let's say 10 or 15 so we have that so another thing i did was to i don't want this to interact with the floor so instead the reason is because by the time i add um okay so let me just leave that so you see the problem i'm going to run to so now that we have this object you can see now the next thing we need to do is to make sure that this thing reflects on this floor because the original image is reflective so you just create a redshift material so let me just stop this a bit and add reflection to it and glossiness so that is all we are going to add to the floor so you add it to the plane object so if you fire up this now you should see reflection on the floor right here Okay, so you have that there. So maybe we'll bring this here and go over to overall or coating here. So let's make this even more reflective. So you can start seeing this object. So if I get rid of this from this plane, you notice what we have so we have that and adding this so i already I already pre-created a texture where i added the ground so i'm just going to bring this over to this and that solves that issue so what i did to the light here was to um prevent the light from showing from hitting this floor because of this reflection. So if you go to these three lights, you go to the project, you want to exclude this from, you can start seeing what is happening. So we don't want this to have effect. So if you get rid of this, you see what we have here. So, so if I look at this first light and exclude this from it, you notice what is happening. So I think here, you have to get rid of this so you can have this so that settles that part so this with this you can always go back and change things to whatever you want if you feel that the color of the shadow is too dark you can change that here and even give transparency so you notice as i'm adding transparency to this you don't have anything when once it gets to one but if i bring it to 0 0.5 you have a little bit of shadow if i make it zero so you have more shadow here so you can you could even bring in a text so let's say i want to bring in more text you can create a more text object bring the more text somewhere here scale this down so we can go to the more text and start changing values around so maybe this is going to be five let's try five and make this 50. so let's make this 10. So let's add, so you can see it interacting with the floor. And all thanks to the math tag, which we've added to this. So you have these objects coming around here. So you could change it to whatever you want. So let's get rid of this cube. We don't need it anymore. So you have this text. So you can make the text anything you want anything whatsoever so maybe this is going to be matte and choose any um font that you wish so you have that maybe bring this up a little bit i don't think i like this font so let's this was the font i chose so maybe i'll bring this down still to 35 and maybe 8 so you, you can start seeing this guy so you, you even see once it floats it interacts you see it's casting shadow on the floor so that's the that is how this is
how interesting and so cool this stuff is so once you're fine you're okay with this you could just put your texture over this object and gives you whatever information you want you can start seeing this here right so um i just quickly thought i should show you this um tool here so really everything you need here is just under your mat tab here just activate this and this and that for the shadow to cast shadow then the other thing is to come over to your dome light very important under your dome light you need to activate your back plate because if you don't activate your back plate this is going to give you a different um light scenario and also i think for this dome light i need to rotate it because if you look at this image right here this should face our camera and the camera is there so you see what we have so what i can do is to select this dome light and rotate it so i'll start rotating until i have that place facing us okay so this is a better representation of it then for it to look realistic just activate your back plate since you've already added that and this is what you have so um i do not want to really take much of your time i just quickly felt i should show you this so if you feel this was helpful please do give me a like and a thumbs up and also if you are new to my channel please do subscribe because i do tutorials like this every time so once more, do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.